In southern Europe, the Alps stand as an immense towering barrier. They're too immense to construct over, too expansive to circumvent. Yet what about piercing straight through? The EU is embarking on an unprecedented endeavor, the creation of a network of tunnels beneath the Alps. But what form will they take? And how will they be constructed? Before delving into the six longest tunnels, let's first explore the Alps. If you've ever ventured to southern Europe, you'd find them impossible to overlook. This mountain range boasts thousands of peaks, with several hundred surpassing the 3,000-meter mark. Spanning over 1,000 kilometers from end to end, the Alps traverse eight distinct countries. Monaco, France, Switzerland, Italy, Liechtenstein, Germany, Austria, and Slovenia. As one might expect, traversing the Alps presents considerable challenges, historically nearly insurmountable. An intriguing tale from ancient Rome recounts Hannibal, a formidable military leader leading his army across them. He even brought war elephants along, although many perished in the frigid conditions. Nowadays, the landscape has evolved. While crossing the Alps remains challenging, there's a considerable network of tunnels, roads, and railways facilitating transit from one side to the other. While transporting an elephant might still pose a challenge, overall, crossing these mountains is far more feasible than in bygone eras. While these routes exist, they are far from perfect. In fact, many of them are significantly outdated, one notable example is the Semmering Railway, which is arguably the oldest mountain railway in Europe, dating back to the 1850s. Although it boasts an impressive infrastructure with numerous tunnels and bridges, it falls short in terms of speed compared to modern railways and has limitations in terms of its capacity to carry heavy loads. For passengers, the leisurely pace of the journey may not be bothersome, especially considering the stunning scenery along the way. However, these railway lines also serve as crucial arteries for freight transportation, with over 200 million tons of goods transported through the Alps annually. For freight operators, the slow and antiquated rails pose a significant bottleneck, and the picturesque views are not sufficient compensation for this inefficiency. In summary, these transit routes are urgently in need of modernization, and this is precisely what the EU is currently working on. Let's discuss the Trans-European Transport Network, commonly abbreviated as 10T. To begin with, it's crucial to note that the scope of 10T extends well beyond the Alps. It represents a monumental initiative aimed at enhancing transportation infrastructure, including roads, railways, shipping routes, and waterways across the entirety of the European Union. The objectives of 10T are straightforward and ambitious. As stated on their website, the aim is to establish seamless transport systems across borders, eliminating physical gaps, bottlenecks, or missing links. Notably, the aging railways in the Alps pose significant challenges as bottlenecks for freight trains, hence prioritizing their improvement within the 10T plan. The concept of 10T was initially conceived in the 1990s. However, it wasn't until 2013 that the European Union formally announced a comprehensive plan outlining nine core network corridors targeted for upgrade and enhancement. Let's quickly run through those corridors one by one. Perhaps you're familiar with some of them. First up is the Baltic Adriatic Corridor, stretching from Poland to Italy. Then, we have the North Sea Baltic Corridor, which extends from Finland all the way to Belgium. Originally, this corridor was intended to include Britain, but Brexit led to its termination in Belgium instead. We have the Mediterranean Corridor, connecting Spain to Hungary, followed by the Orient East Med Corridor from Germany to Cyprus. The Scandinavian Mediterranean Corridor spans from Finland to Italy, while the Rhine Alpine Corridor stretches from the Netherlands to Italy. Additionally, there's the Atlantic Corridor from Portugal to France, the North Sea Mediterranean from Ireland to France, and finally, the Rhine-Danube Corridor which runs from Germany to Romania. Rest assured, we won't delve into the specifics of each corridor. Overall, the 10T is poised to revolutionize European travel, making it more accessible for people across the continent to reach their destinations. And when it comes to the Alps, the EU is reshaping the future of travel through extensive excavation efforts. The process of constructing tunnels for railway lines is intricate and time-consuming. Typically, it follows a series of steps. Initially, a team selects a starting point and an end point. Then they commence digging and drilling, often simultaneously from both ends of the tunnel. Gradually and cautiously, while reinforcing the tunnel walls as they progress, the two teams converge until they finally meet in the middle, an event known as the breakthrough. Subsequently, the tunnel undergoes further reinforcement before the railway lines are installed. However, this method can encounter complications. During the construction of the Lutscheberg Tunnel, a 15-kilometer alpine tunnel completed in 1908, workers inadvertently breached a water pocket resulting in a tunnel flood and the loss of 25 lives. Moreover, there's always the risk of cave-ins since a tunnel essentially functions as a hollow tube subjected to the pressure of thousands of tons of soil and rock from above. Despite these challenges, the EU has successfully completed the excavation of two enormous new tunnels. One of them has broken several world records in terms of length, and there are ongoing efforts to construct others that will surpass even that achievement. Let's examine the details of the initial tunnel they completed. The Lutschberg Base Tunnel, located in Switzerland, is a vital component of the Rhine-Alpine Corridor, 
which spans from the North Sea to the Mediterranean shores. Over 70 million people reside alongside this corridor, constituting approximately 15% of the EU's total population. Thanks to the Lechberg Base Tunnel, these individuals can now traverse the Alps more efficiently than ever before. Named in proximity to the original Lechberg Tunnel, completed in 1913 and tragically marked by the deaths of 25 workers due to a flood, the new Lechberg Base Tunnel surpasses its predecessor in both length and speed. Stretching over 35 kilometers from end to end, it enables a significant reduction in total travel time, potentially up to 50%. The benefits of the Lechberg Base Tunnel extend to both passengers and freight transportation, offering potential environmental advantages as well. Increased train usage over cars and planes could lead to a substantial decrease in emissions and potentially alleviate road congestion and hazards. In fact, one freight train has the capacity to replace approximately 60 heavy vehicles, theoretically. While the construction of this colossal tunnel primarily involved traditional drilling, digging, and blasting methods akin to those used in the original tunnel, approximately 20% of its length was excavated using a modern tunnel boring machine, TBM. TBMs are massive machines equipped with a rotating cutter head at one end and a thrusting system behind it. Powered up, they tunnel through rock like mechanical worms, expelling waste debris as they progress. Some TBMs even reinforce tunnel walls by laying down concrete or rock bolts as they advance. Compared to traditional drilling methods, modern tunnel boring machines, TBMs, offer significant advantages in terms of speed and reliability. This advancement has greatly influenced the European Union's approach to tunnel construction. Historically, routes were designed to minimize the need for extensive tunneling. They would wind down mountain passes along slow, circuitous paths. When tunnels were necessary, they were often situated near the mountaintop, where the rock was narrower, requiring less excavation. However, with the advent of powerful TBMs, the EU has shifted towards constructing base tunnels. Massive tunnels that cut directly through the base of a mountain. These tunnels eliminate the need for numerous turns and bends and obviate the gradual ascent typical of traditional routes. Instead, a base tunnel provides a direct, efficient route from one end to the other. The Luchberg Base Tunnel is just one example of the base tunnels constructed under the 10T initiative. In 2016, the construction of the Gotthard Base Tunnel was completed. Spanning 57 kilometers from end to end, this tunnel is nearly twice as long as the Luchberg Base Tunnel. At present, it holds the title of the world's longest railway tunnel, albeit subject to change in the coming years. Like the Luchberg Base Tunnel, the Gotthard Base Tunnel is integral to the Rhine-Alpine Corridor, contributing to a reduction in train travel time between Switzerland and Italy by as much as an hour. Remarkably, it also holds the distinction of being the deepest railway tunnel globally. Taking into account the mountain above it, certain sections of the tunnel reach depths of almost 2.5 kilometers below the surface, surpassing the depths of Europe's deepest mines. What's even more remarkable about this project is that, technically, the Gotthard Base Tunnel consists of two tunnels running side by side. One is designated for trains traveling from north to south, while the other serves trains traveling from south to north. In simpler terms, the Gotthard Base Tunnel isn't just a single 57-kilometer long structure. It's essentially two 57-kilometer tunnels side by side. Such a colossal undertaking required the deployment of four massive tunnel boring machines, TBMs, working concurrently. These TBMs are renowned for their precision. For well over a year, two teams directed their TBMs through the mountain, one traveling north from one end of the tunnel and the other traveling south from the opposite end. When they finally converged in the middle, they found that their tunnels were almost perfectly aligned, with only a minor discrepancy of four or five millimeters between them. Considering the scale of the project, this level of precision was deemed highly successful. However, the construction process was not without its challenges. Tragically, nine workers lost their lives due to accidents such as being struck by machinery, or being buried under fallen debris. This relatively high number of fatalities underscores the inherent dangers associated with tunneling, despite the implementation of modern techniques. Nevertheless, the record-breaking Gotthard Base Tunnel was eventually completed at a staggering cost of approximately $12 billion. It now hosts a high-speed train line and opened to passengers in 2016, marking a significant milestone for the Tenti Initiative. However, this achievement is just the beginning. As more base tunnels are currently under construction beneath the Alps, some of which surpass the Gotthard Base Tunnel in terms of length and depth, let's start with an overview of the Mont Damban Base Tunnel, currently slated for completion in 2032. This tunnel forms an integral part of the Mediterranean Corridor, which traverses the Alps, connecting southern Spain to Hungary. Upon its completion, the tunnel will span an impressive 57.5 kilometers, surpassing the length of the Gotthard Base Tunnel by a couple of hundred meters. Similar to other base tunnels, it consists of two parallel tunnels connected by maintenance shafts. The construction of the Mont Dambien Base Tunnel entails excavating over 100 kilometers of rock. To expedite this process, plans involve employing eight tunnel boring machines, strategically spaced along the tunnel. 
tunnel's length. Spanning between two separate countries, the tunnel begins in France and exits in Italy. The introduction of high-speed trains within the tunnel promises to revolutionize travel, significantly reducing journey times. For instance, passengers traveling from Lyon to Turin or Paris to Milan will experience travel times more than two hours faster than previously possible. Additionally, the Mont Dambin base tunnel will double the capacity for freight transportation, increasing from 700 to 1,500 tons of daily goods. The estimated cost of the entire project is approximately $8 billion, with the European Union financing 40% of the expenses, while France and Italy share the remaining costs. This initiative serves as a prime illustration of the objectives of the 10T, aiming to create new transport routes that alleviate bottlenecks and enhance travel convenience for all. However, somewhat surprisingly, not everyone is supportive of this plan. Concerns have been raised by local residents at both ends of the tunnel, particularly in France and Italy, regarding the introduction of high-speed trains. They express apprehensions about the noise, safety risks, and potential damage to ecosystems caused by these trains. Despite these objections, the project is proceeding, albeit amidst protests, demonstrations, and legal appeals to European courts. This scenario serves as a poignant reminder that despite the ambitious goals of the 10T initiative, there are differing opinions on its necessity and cost-effectiveness, particularly considering the significant financial investment involved. Together, the construction costs of the Lechberg Base Tunnel, the Gotthard Base Tunnel, and the Mont Dambam Base Tunnel exceed $20 billion. Moreover, there are several other tunnel projects yet to be mentioned. In Austria, construction teams are currently focused on the Koralm Tunnel, a 30-kilometer tunnel segment situated more than 1,000 meters underground. During the construction process, the project encountered pockets of groundwater, necessitating the implementation of proper waterproofing measures for the tunnel walls. To address this, an environmentally friendly, plastic-free liner has been installed along the entire length of the tunnel. The Koralm Tunnel is nearing completion and is anticipated to open for passenger train services sometime in 2026. Another noteworthy project in Austria is the Semmering Base Tunnel, aimed at modernizing the historic Semmering Bahn, which is recognized as the oldest mountain railway in Europe. This ambitious endeavor involves the construction of a 27-kilometer tunnel, expected to significantly reduce travel times through the Alps by at least 30 minutes. And lastly, let's turn our attention to what is poised to become the longest tunnel in the Alps, the Brenner Base Tunnel. Before we delve into details, if you found this video enjoyable thus far, we would greatly appreciate your feedback in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of our content. Now let's get back to discussing the Brenner Base Tunnel, undoubtedly the most ambitious project among them all. Similar to the Mont Dambin Base Tunnel, it will traverse two different countries, from Austria on the northern side of the Alps to Italy in the south. Spanning a total distance of 55 kilometers, the Brenner Base Tunnel is slightly shorter than the Mont Dambin Base. However, it also incorporates a 9-kilometer side tunnel known as the Innsbruck Bypass, bringing the total length to 64 kilometers. While it may not be a single straight line, this hasn't deterred the team behind the Brenner Base Tunnel from hailing it as the longest underground railway connection in the world. Once again, similar to previous projects, the Brenner Base Tunnel consists of two side-by-side -side tunnels, complemented by a smaller third exploratory tunnel beneath them. However, what sets this project apart is the intriguing twist in the tunnel design. In Austria, trains operate on the right-hand side of the tracks, while in Italy they run on the left-hand side. This unique feature reflects the collaborative efforts between the two countries to ensure seamless transportation across borders. Inside the Brenner Base Tunnel, deep beneath the surface, it's indeed a literal twist in the tunnel design. To accomplish this feat, engineers are employing a formidable fleet of tunnel boring machines, each affectionately named Serena, Virginia, Lilia. Presently, these machines are diligently excavating through the heart of the Alps, steadily advancing and expelling rock in their wake. The Brenner Base Tunnel is currently slated for completion in 2032, with an estimated cost of around $11.4 billion. When combined with the expenses of other Alpine tunnels, the total expenditure approaches nearly $45 billion. Additionally, there are smaller tunnels under construction, such as the 15-kilometer Scenari Base Tunnel, which unfortunately we didn't have time to discuss. These monumental infrastructure projects are poised to revolutionize Europe's transportation landscape. However, the question remains, are they truly worth the substantial investment? We eagerly await your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below.